Hey folks, it's Frithgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. I'm just going to go and check our sheep. Just want to make sure that everything is all tickety-boo with them. We've got plenty in there. We've got food and water in for the chickens as well. So they're actually looking pretty good. I was just going to come out, you know, we may as well just put that one go in a second. Do it like that. There we go. A little bit of stuff on the ground, but nothing really to worry about. And we've got a lot of wool here. We got two, three, we got three full pallets and two part pallets. And then the eggs over this side, we've got a full pallet over here. We've got some part pallets and the little ones up the front. I've got four and a half thousand in that one, thirteen hundred and eleven hundred in that one. We're going to end up with a lot of eggs here. Prices. How are we doing with our prices today? We've got uh, 755 there for oats. That's down just a smidgen. We've got on, on the beans, they're at 1,200, although I wasn't actually planning to sell the beans. We've got with eggs, uh, 1,800. Wool is 930. So we want wool to come up. Silage doesn't really matter, but straw is the one. 66 for straw. Is that high or low? I don't really know if that's a high point or a low point, to be honest. I honestly can't say at this point. Uh, one thing that I would like to do that a lot of people have been asking me to do for quite some time is I'm going to take this one. I'm going to bring that one back round there like that. Pull that one in there. And I'm going to... Ooh. I tell you what, we will cut these three trees that we've got right here. We will cut these three, and then we will drive it down the bottom, and I will finally service and repair the scorpion. A lot of you have been asking me to do that for quite some time now, and I do remember every now and then, and then I forget, and then I remember, and then I forget, and yeah. It's not good. I'll admit it's not good. So we, we, we've got to this point. I'm going to take it down to the bottom and I'm going to repair it. I don't know what difference it makes with repairing for the scorpion. Because we know that, like some of them, it, it affects uh, different performances. A lot of the uh, field implements, they go a lot slower in the field. I don't know if it cuts the tree slower, maybe. Um, we know that, uh, well, I believe, I, I may have got this right, that if a combine header is really low on repair value, then you actually lose yield, right? It, that impacts the yield that you get from the field when you're doing your harvesting. Uh, but, see, we're, we're not going to be losing yield on our trees when we've got this one under, in poor repair. So my only guess is that it's actually just putting the trees through ever so slightly slower than what it would do normally so only really well the only real way to check that is to do it here and i mean it does seem like it's going a little bit slow but i, I mean honestly I, I don't know at the moment we'll find out we'll take this down to the bottom and we will see so let's bring that one back in like that there we go we will shut that one down and we will go for a little mosey i'm thinking that it would be a good idea to come up and get the timber that we've got up here Get that down and get that sold, and then we'll worry about taking out the last of the trees. Um, although before I go taking out too many more trees, the other thing I'd like to do is clear all the stumps up here and plant the trees that I want to plant up there, and then I've also got stuff that I want to cut down down the bottom there. Before I cut that though, I am going to take those trees out up there. Those are the important ones. I would really like to get those done. So we'll bring you in round, and we're going to hose you off as well. We'll give this one a full full clean and service. We'll do the whole lot. The whole works this one can have. So we'll bring it in here, like that. And I'll stop it right there. And we'll give it a good hose down. So let's have you, and let's get on the case. Like that. Look at that. Look at that shiny coat coming through. This is wonderful. That's what we want. We want to actually be able to see the beast underneath. Beneath all the dirt. There it is. That's looking wonderful. The King Scorpion. Or Scorpion King. Probably Scorpion King. Although I don't know if that particular name is copyrighted these days. 
it's a wonderful film. I love, I do like the Scorpion King film, and there is not just one sequel to the Scorpion King. There are a whole load of Scorpion King films. They are budget fantasy films, and I know that budget fantasy is definitely not to everybody's taste, but my goodness me, I do love... Um, uh, personally, I, I really like budget fantasy. Right, 3000 that one cost. But it's now fully repaired, back up and raring to go. That is fantastic. Uh, but yeah, I'm not going to go... Oh, well, tell you what, we will cut a tree down. Just to see. Just to see how much of an impact this has made. I don't know if he's driving... Is he going faster now? He's doing 14 miles an hour. I don't know what he was doing before. I wasn't really paying attention. I probably should have been. Um, we'll go over... We'll just grab one tree here. Um, but yeah, the Scorpion King films, I think they're absolutely brilliant. I really enjoy them. And I've not seen all of them yet, but I've seen several of them. And I've enjoyed the ones that I've seen. There's a good little story going on with it all. And yeah, it's fun to watch. Um... It's, but it's, it's definitely not to everybody's taste. Budget fantasy is really not for everybody's tastes. That seems to be about the same speed that it was running before. It really, that, that definitely seems to be the same speed that it was running before. So I don't really know what the penalty is for this one being sort of worn out. You know that some of the things, they, they do get quite a, a hefty penalty when they get worn out. Now, the other things that I wanted to do... First, I want to move this tractor out of the way. It has been suggested that I should keep my loader and stuff a bit closer to the animal pens where I'm actually using them. And, yeah, that's probably fair enough. We could stick them around the other side. The only thing is, is shunting in and out of there with trailers when we want to move stuff around. That's why I've got them over this side. Um... So, yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure about that. We, we, we may change things, we may not. Now... Our electric tractor here. I've still yet to clean and repair the um, the wrapper here. So what I'll do is I'll drive this one up over here. Get that one right up to there so that it's ready to hose off. And then I will leave it there for a minute. I'm not going to do anything else with it just yet. Uh, what else was I going to do? Oh, right. That's still on 66. We could go and have a look. Is it decoration, I think? Yes, decoration. Right, we've got a dead birch tree. I could just put dead birch trees along the top. I like that we've got a dead tree. An extra large birch. We've got pines, dead pines, a pine giant. A poplar. I actually quite like poplar trees. The spruce giant. How... How much is the spruce? 2,100 for a spruce giant. An extra large is 350. The giant is 2,100. That is a ridiculous amount of money for the big stuff. That's the one that I'd really like up there. There's a few of these. Look at this thing. Look at it. That's fantastic. That's what we want. Let's move it up a little bit faster. Um... Yeah, something like that going up there would be pretty cool, but we can't afford that. That That is way expensive. The poplar is way expensive as well. We've got dead birch of 500. The extra large birch is 1,500. It does look pretty good. I mean, I suppose we could put one up here. I know that I want the money for other things, but honestly, I'm, I'm quite happy to do this. I'm going to put this as far away from the edge as possible because I do want to make a field here and these types of trees really annoy me on the edges of fields. So this large birch tree is going to go over in this corner over here like that. And then we're going to take a couple of medium birch trees. Which I'm going to put here like this. Right, they're, they're growing into the rock there, which is what stunted their growth a bit. And then we're going to go with a large birch tree here. That one in there like that. And another one down here. And we're not going to do all birch trees, or are we? No. Apparently we, that is all we're going to do. We don't have any oak trees. We've only got birch trees. We've got spruce poplar, pine, and oak. So, I mean, we, we could take a 
dead birch tree. A couple of these right in there. I tell you what, let's put them down along the bank a little bit like this. Oh dear, I'm fast running out of money here. Um, let's go back through birch medium. Like that. And there. And then a small one growing up there. And I've run out of money. Right, that is all the cash that we've got for the minute. So we can't go and get any more trees. Not for a minute. So we've at least got some trees up there. I said that I would get trees up there. I've gone and spent several thousand putting the trees there. And we have now got them. They are there and they're, they're ready to go. They're, they're ready and raring. And I want to go in here and I want to change that to one pile like that. Uh, the auto load is on the left at the moment. Switch auto load to right. I'll do that. It's on the right hand side right now. Okay, I'll just press B to start it loading when I want it to start loading. I'm going to head up here first. Going to go right up to the top, and I'm then going to start loading once I get up here. Because, uh, first of all, I'd like to just have a little drive over this way and have a look at our new trees that we've got. Securing the bank. See, I'm not going to be going I'm not going to be driving down the bank that far. I'm only going to be coming about here with the edge of our field. Alright, so we're away from this line of trees that we've got in here, which is good. That's what I want. I didn't want to be close to the trees with my with the edge of the field. That's something that really irritates me when I'm doing any field work, is having trees too close by. I don't know why, it just does. It bugs me. It really does. It's um it's just one of those things. Is this one of the, the it, it's mainly because it's it's awkward when you're trying to like turn on the headlands and then you've got the, the tree foliage is all in the way. Um, and yeah, if I was doing in-cab driving, it would be a lot easier, but I don't like to do in-cab driving. So um, that sort of leaves me with a desire to clear all the trees that I can see in every direction. And that way, I don't have any issues. If, if, I, if I remove all trees, if I treat trees like they are evil, and I remove every single one of them, I never have any issues with them. It's it's absolutely fine then. But there has been a lot of insistence that I have to have some trees around here in order to, you know, stop things like um, erosion and, and other minor details like that. So, okay, I've done it. I've done what everybody has asked, and now we've stopped the erosion. So everybody should be happy, and I'm also happy because I've got the trees far enough away that they're not going to affect my field. Which is really good. That's, that was the main thing I was looking for. Something that wasn't going to affect my field. Okay. Now I need to get in a little bit closer. And we'll start heading down to these. There are a lot of stumps here I've got to take out. That's going to be the next thing we do, I think. Is we're going to do some work on the tree stumps. Because there are a huge number of tree stumps here. That we're going to want to be doing some work with. Uh, I've got a little tiny small one there. That's about to go creeping away. I don't want it to do that. I can just gather up a decent load here. Uh, well, I'm not going to worry about getting any more. I'm going to just secure them on there. We're going to run them down the hill down here. And we're going to run them back to the yard. And then I will do another circuit and grab more logs. And then once I've done that... One do several circuits until I've gotten rid of all of the logs that are up there on that hill. Once they're all down in the yard, then we will sell them. Then we will get the stump grinder out and we will go around and we will deal with stumps. And then we've just got the last little bit in the middle. Plus, we've still got that straw to sell. That's another thing on our to-do list. It's a very important thing on our to-do list. Right, let's take you off of there and start unloading you. And while that's unloading there, still on 66... So that price hasn't changed at all. Just get that little pile and it's always a very satisfying experience watching the logs unload themselves like this. This is one I don't think I will ever grow tired of. There we go. Off we go to get the next lot. See, this this is always the bit. You know, you, you spend ages doing the work with the um, the Ponzi Scorpion, and it's it's not the most exciting of jobs. It's, it's a bit tedious. You, you're working your way through it. But you are aware that you're slowly accumulating more and more logs. 
And then you get to kind of the more action-packed side of things, is where you start going and gathering the logs out of the field and doing what you will with them. Now, not everybody gathers the logs using an autoloader. Some people prefer to gather the logs up using um, grabs and grapples and everything, in which case this stage will take a fair bit longer. But then you eventually get to a stage where you're selling stuff. Whether you've decided to put everything that you've gotten in the field um, or in the forestry, whether you've decided to put it into a great big um, log pile and then you're quickly loading up transport lorries to take it off to sell it, or if you're loading direct in the field and taking them off and selling them. Whichever way you do it, you have that glorious moment where you have a full load pulling into the sawmill and you're getting ready to sell it. And that is always the best bit. I always like that. that uh, that's something that I love about this game anyway, is selling stuff. Like taking a nice big load of grain off to market, uh, whichever market might be wanting it at the time, and selling it. It's just an immensely satisfying feeling. Selling that grain and making that money. Get, getting that money, see, seeing the money go rolling upwards. It's always nice to see it going upwards as opposed to down. Because, you know, it, it does... Down is quite a frequent occurrence in this game when it comes to the money. It, it frequently heads downwards. So getting it to the market and, and getting it going in the opposite direction is always pleasant. Right, I think that's probably enough on that load. We've got at least another load, maybe two, before we've exhausted the supply of logs that we got up here. Which is quite a lot of logs, actually. You know, by the time we get all of that lot done, um, we're... Okay, I've got a uh, steep bank there. I'll be careful coming down off of that. Um, by the time we get all of this lot sold, we will have a reasonable amount of money. Not enough to go and buy a cattle pen yet, I don't think. I don't think we're close enough to be buying a cattle pen, but we're getting, we're heading that way. And besides which, we're still going to need to do a load more work down here. Right, we will get you to about there, I think, and then start unloading. Um, oh, wow. It's further back than I thought. Right, I want to try and keep it all in one heap because it makes it easier for loading. Um, that is... The pile of logs lined up halfway between one, two, the th halfway back on the third gap. That's where we need to remember. Yeah, I need to remove some more of those trees there to make way for uh, different pens because um, the message seems to be that you don't really want me putting the cattle pen up there. Not if it's going to cost how much we reckon it was going to cost. So we want to put it down on the level. We want to put it down near the bottom where it's much flatter and much easier to get it installed and cheaper mainly if that's that's the key point here is that it will be considerably cheaper and that will make a difference to everything else with it um it'll be cheaper it'll be cheaper to get the re the the lanes the paths the roads set up ready for it uh, we won't need extra storage anywhere else for it we can have the storage right down by the yard um so yeah, it will, it will ultimately be quicker, easier, and cheaper. The only reason for moving it that we really had was that it was going to... It was a gameplay issue rather than a design issue because gameplay um, is likely to get a bit laggy once we get that many um, different animal pens all in one place. That's okay, we can work around that. All right, I've got one log there that's sliding... Are, are you stopped low... No, you're not stop loading. Why aren't you loading these logs? It's loaded one. Ah. It's just being slow for some reason. Oh, there's one over there. I also want to try and get those there to slide back a bit. So I'm going to do that again. Right, well, I got one to slide back a bit. The other is not quite so keen to slide back a bit. I suppose if I was going uphill, it would make a difference. Just got one log. There we go. Little tiny one that I wanted to pick up. And now I want to spin round in this way. Yeah, I reckon that we've got enough to fill up another trailer load when we come back up here again. Should be enough to fill it up completely, I'd have thought. Right. 
two more logs there, and then I'll go down this way and I'll get a few more off of this little heap. There's quite a lot of them just here on this bit. Surprising number, actually. And now I come down here. How many of these am I... Oh, it does reach out quite a way. That's the thing. Like, sometimes it seems to reach a really long way with the range on this. And then other times you sort of look at it and you think, well, why aren't you getting that? You, you went and got one right next to it. And that one isn't good enough. I think it's the angle of the logs as well. I think that does impact it. Right. That's all loaded up. Now we will go over this way. I'm going to head along the top of the hill up here. And then we'll run down this way. Let's not tip this trailer over, eh? Let's, let's try and keep this trailer on the straight and narrow. Let's try and keep it upright. So I want to ease myself down here. And just slide in there. Nice and gentle. Like that. Right. Slowly does it. See, you've got to be careful. It's very, very easy to tip this log trailer over. I have done it many times before. I haven't done it on this series, fortunately. Um, but I have tipped this log trailer over. I've tipped this log trailer over on multiplayer. I've actually done that a couple times. Um, when we were doing some multiplayer work with it. I think it was on the Estancia map when we were clearing the big plateau at the top. Um, that was some of our first live streaming that we did. Uh, about halfway along, I said on the third one, so I want to go there. And then I want to start unloading logs and... Ooh, nice one. Right, we got that lined up. So there's another load. We've got at least one more. And then it's the stump grinding bit that... Well, I'm, I'm going to sell the logs first. Uh, but we have got stump grinding to do. And that's going to be the tedious bit. Uh, out of all of it, I think that's going to be... Well, not the most tedious. The most tedious will probably be the plowing, to be honest. We know that. The plowing is almost always a tedious job. But this is the hardcore series. Which means that, um, yeah, I can't sort of just go and, like, set it up and leave it running or anything like that. It's all got to be done. So I might break it up with some extra bits somewhere in there. Let's start that one up again. And then I'm going to take this line along here. And get these. I think this is it, actually. I think we'll get all of this in one load. What we've got left here is that little tiny one. Let's get that one in as well. Is it going to go? Here it is. Right at the top. Why it's gone up there... I'm sure. Right. Yeah, that's not part of the master plan. I will come back for that one, I think. Oh, no, I won't. It. The reason it didn't pick it up was because it actually shut off. Why it shut... It does do that, though. When If, if you have... Um, there. Now it's gone up on top of the lorry. Right, that's annoying. I, I really, really hate it when it does that. Why can't you just stay in there like that? What's wrong with that? It's not going to hurt you, is it? And then because I picked it up and moved it, it's um, it stopped the log loading process. Or it might just be because I jumped out of the cab. No, it's because the logs are trying to sit up too high up on that side. As long as they're down on the lower side, they're all right. But when they try to go up on the higher bit, then it shuts it off. It, re it sort of it registers that it's gone too high on the stack and doesn't let it go any further. That seems to be okay. So I will shut it all off. That is the last bit. There, there isn't any more. That is the last of the trees. That is the last of the logs. So we'll take this down here. Run down this way like this. And we do want to go slowly. Ish. Slowly, slowly ish. Ish is at least a, a, a good step in the right direction. And then we do want to go slowly round this bit. Because otherwise we're just going to tip it right on its side. The, the, the last thing it, you really want is for it to just flop over. And it does. It does. It sort of leans for a bit. And slowly moves and slowly moves. And then flop. Just there. Like, it, it, there's no in-between sort of stage. It it thinks about it for ages and then just suddenly flops out and that's it. 
There is nothing more you can do. Once it's decided to flop out, that's it. You, you can't do anything about it. It's going to go, and that's it. And move up there a little bit more like that. So it's lined up in between those two. There, and then we can start unloading again. So I've got a nice load here. We should have two full loads here without too much trouble, I'm hoping. And I'm going to stay right where I am and start it loading again. Only this time, what we're going to do is I'm going to press enter on the small keypad. And that should allow me to have two lots. And then we start loading like that. And it starts putting them back in again. Now, we need to go steady with this. Not too much. But not too little either. Otherwise, we'll be here forever. And... Right, so far that's working well. And then it's automatically switched over to the back load as well. And it's taken it quite nicely from the pile there. And it's also lo dropping the logs in quite neat and tidy as well at the moment. It, excuse me. It doesn't always drop them in neat and tidy. Right, it's got to that point. Do I want to try and overload it and get more in? You can bet your bottom dollar I do. But something I like to do is to overload this thing. I'm going to try and get some more onto the back here. Like that. There, it's got a couple of extra. And I'll put one up there and it should get another one in the middle. Another one up there. Don't fall off. Ugh. Right, we've now reached the point where, <laughs> where they're all just rolling off. And that's going to make it a little bit more difficult. Uh, right, you know what? I think we ought to stop there. Because the straps aren't going to hold anymore anyway. Right, I put the straps on to there. But they, they are, honestly, they're, they're not going to take any more than that. They're not going to hold anymore. So we'll take this load here off to the mill. And get this sold. Then we can come back. And once we come back, we will check on the straw price again. Although I doubt that it's done anything. It's, if it started to drop, that's... I mean, I'm thinking 60 is a pretty good price, isn't it? Actually, let's check it now, just in case. No, it's not moving yet. The hay... Wow. Hay has gone up to 109, and it's still climbing. So hay is going up, which does leave me hopeful that straw should go higher than 66. I don't know if it's been on 66 for a while or not. It's been a week since I did any recording on this, so... You know, in that space of time, anything that's resembled a number or anything else to do with this game in any way, shape or form has managed to flutter its way out of my skull and I've got no hope of ever recalling it. So what the numbers were previously, I don't really know. I I'm aware of some of the numbers, just not very many of them. Um, now, I'm going to bring that in. I was thinking of a different version of hardcore that we could do in that... the you know, we, we work for a paper mill or something. And so we cannot sell logs. We're not allowed to sell logs to it. Even if the mill has got, like, a, a log sale point, um, the, that, the point of it is that we wouldn't be allowed to sell logs. We would have to chip everything up. Um, I did think of not of sort of... But then I was sort of wondering, well, I don't know about that. Um, maybe we could do it where you've got to cut them down and then chip them up or something like that I, I i don't really know i mean it it's a possibility sell that lot there 38000 already it's pretty good going and then dump all that lot down they've all fallen down and another 12 that is $51000 we got for that lot 51000 that was pretty we had 6 dollars We've now got 50, so we had $51,024. That's pretty good. I'm quite pleased with that. That's not bad for one load. Um, yeah, the, like, doing, doing just wood chips, we've got automatic wood chipping machines so that we don't have to worry about crane arms and stuff like that. And, because if you are using crane arms to slowly put stuff through a wood chipper, it takes such a long time to do it, doesn't it? It is a very tedious and time-consuming job. There are faster ways of moving the logs and getting them into wood chippers. There are bigger wood chippers, uh, but they're not. They're still not that great, right? They, they do still take quite a bit of time. 
Now, we got another load here that I would like to try and get on. Uh, first up, I'm going to get these two logs right here. And I'm not going to get them facing that way. So we'll, eat, we'll leave those two logs then. We will do it like this instead. I'm going to bring that one over to there. No, that's still a, the wrong side. Well, actually, you know what? We can do it like that. I'll just change the load side. Um, so I will do that to change the load side. And then I will start loading. And we will see if it's going to load it all up. How much are we going to fit in here? Are we actually going to load the thing right to the brim? Or is it going to stop before it's going to stop? Right. Now, this is the point where I don't want to have it loading while I'm moving. Because if I do, it's going to end up moving sideways and it's going to drop logs onto the floor. And that's what I don't want to do. I mean, I don't like it doing that. That's, that's bad enough when it does that. And load again. There, it sticks them up on the side like that. And it's an absolute jolly nuisance. That one there. And also, there are fewer logs here than I thought. I mean, we'll, we'll grab all of them without any trouble at all, actually. Right, we'll take the whole lot here. And they are all going to go over to the sawmill. So I will just run around here like this. I've only got those two still to be lifted. Okay, I had one fall off there. And then we back up here. And we get that little bit there. That is it. That is all of it. That is the entire load. So I will strap that bit on and we'll take this up. There's less than I thought. There's honestly less. I thought we had quite a bit more than that. I thought there'd be enough. Well, I suppose, no. We, we did four runs, didn't we? Up to the field and back, we did four runs. And those are always untidy. When we're loading them from down here... They're a lot more level. And I completely forgot to do the 30 times speed. So we will fast forward until about 2 o'clock this afternoon. Let's go around here slowly. Because I did quite a bit of loading up in the field. So, yeah, I reckon that we need at least another 3 hours on the clock for that. Um, maybe even 3 o'clock. No, we'll, we'll go to 3 o'clock this afternoon. And then we'll see what it's like. So I've got another three hours to run. So we add four, four and a half hours on the clock. I think that'll be about right. In the meantime, I can get this one up here and we can sell these few logs that we've got. This one, I reckon that we'll get about 30. Th we had 50 grand from our last load. I reckon this one's going to be giving us 30 grand. You know, it's, it's still a pretty good load of logs. So I wouldn't be surprised to find that it's 30 grand's worth. Let's bring it to about there and take straps off and then go over to here. Sell 28,000 there. Dump those down. 2,007. It was actually almost 29,000, so that is 31. Well, it's 32,708 is what we had from that one. So I can see it from the, the top number. 32,000 from there and 50,000 from the last load, we've now got $82,000. In order to be able to buy any other pen at all, we're going to need a lot more money than that. Another big sheep pen. Maybe we should go for... No, I, I, I was just wondering if we should go for a big chicken pen. But no, I don't think we will. I'm not going to go and get a load of money for chickens. I'm not going to do it like that. Possibly... You know, working towards another sheep pen is a good idea. We could save this money and use it for another sheep pen. And then we get quite a bit extra coming in through there. All right, you're going to go over this way and you're going to park. I will clean this one down and do a full repair and clean and hose off when we've got the rest of those logs up there. And you have fast forwarded enough now. I'll stick you on five times. And what are you? Still 66 on the straw doesn't look to be changing we'll see about selling the straw possibly in our next episode i think uh we've also got wool now milk is 1100 908 the wool has i don't know if that's gone all the way up and then gone back down again eggs are on the up so we may get something from eggs well we'll worry about that next time so if you've enjoyed this episode then please head down below and give us a like and if you really enjoyed it then please tell your friends all about me get them to come and watch as well that would be awesome and until next time, 
Thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.